Ambassador, uh, uh, I asked you the other day how many countries you, you have lived in, and when I say lived in, I meant for at least a year. And the ambassador told me that he lived in 14 states. For someone... 16. 16? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm this sorry. old, I had to live <laughs> okay. in a lot of places. <laughs> okay, so even, even worse. <laughs> uh, for someone like most of us here, uh, excluding the, the Americans present, uh, but including me, for whom the biggest move in, in, in the city where I lived all my life was when I was moving from Vracar to Savski Venets. It, this, is, this is hard to imagine. Uh, how do you feel about it? Well, I mean, I've never done anything different but move all the time. But maybe I had a discussion with a colleague before about the difference between a house and a home. And in some ways in Serbia, you get attached to a building. And, and Sarah and I have made our home wherever we are. So we consider Belgrade our home now. I'm a lovely guy. No. <laughs> um, I, I do think I, I think through things. I, I, I try to think before I open my mouth. That's actually something useful for other people. Um, but I'm open. I try to be open to things. I think, you know, living in all these places, I try to avoid being too judgmental because there may be multiple right answers, and Lord knows there are multiple wrong answers. So I would say that I try to be open to different opinions, mm -hmm. try to avoid being too judgmental. I hope I treat people decently. Well, there is the joke about a diplomat as being somebody who can tell you to go to hell in such a way you enjoy the trip. Because I think in many ways, for me, diplomacy is sales. Maybe I would have actually studied in school. <laughs> I drove my mother nuts. Uh, I drove my teachers nuts. And I probably learned a little less than I should have. I mean, I did learn how to learn. Well, I, I think if you get to choose who chooses you as a mentor, mm -hmm. then maybe you want to have somebody whose career is something that you respect. And how they, in my case, I didn't necessarily want to deal with people who treated me like a jerk or who obviously treated others like that. Uh, planning long-term planning. Uh, when my kids were born, my grandparents were still alive. And they gave them zero coupon government bonds to help pay for education. And the bonds became mature 18 years later. I don't see that happening in Serbia. Nobody trusts that a government bond is going to be valid 18 years later. or that There have been some issues about that over the years. That Long-term planning, I think, because of the nature of society, doesn't take place the same way here. Um, and it's not irrational, given the history that you had yes. in the 20th century. The rational behavior based on your history makes short-term planning more logical than long-term planning. I think you can build a more stable society if you can think longer term. Belgrade, I think, is pretty open, and I didn't expect that in the same way. Um, I didn't expect the restaurants. Um, the symphony's been a lot better than I thought it was. I traveled with them. So you have this cultural aspect that has remained despite the exodus of some of the people. And so it's a, it's a different kind of place than I thought, even though I had given some thought to it and maybe Belgrade is a rather big city for Serbia. Um, with the pluses that, you know, they're much more cosmopolitan. I, I think it's a fun place to be. The more, as a society, you can focus on creating a better future for your young people, 
rather than trying to figure out how to right the past wrongs and, and, and getting exactly what was the past. Re remember it, cherish it, respect it, but don't be captivated by it. That you have to be captivated by the future, not the past. You have to use the present to get to a future, not use the present to correct the past. That's what I would say as a parting.